Hi YouTube, Francis here. Thank you for coming back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I bid thee welcome. There is a subscribe button and a bell below if you want to be notified as to when I upload more content, which I do on a rather ad hoc basis. And by subscribing, you also support this channel because I don't do Patreon or beg you for money to support this channel in any other way, shape or form. I'm coming to you from Ghana country, and as such, I acknowledge the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains as the traditional custodians of this land. In doing so, I acknowledge their elders past, present, and emerging. So, I found some paperwork getting a bit, a bit tidy up, because the weather's sort of intermittent between thunderstorms. We've had some rain. Not Thunderstorms haven't quite arrived yet. And... I found this couple of pages full of notes on cursing. So I thought, why not turn it into a video? Because cursing seems to be a rather standard magical act these days. And I say that because back in the day, last century, when I was training, I would say we were against it, despite what people think of Wicca or Wiccan forms of witchcraft or contemporary initiatory witchcraft and set your own label here that we were all supposed to be in this love fest of unharmed none yep i think i waffled on about that in another video recently but anyway um cursing when i was being trained was so not frowned upon it was actually not the first protocol or action thing that you grabbed out of your toolkit when someone annoyed the crap out of you. There were other things you did first and it was almost like if you needed to curse somebody it was kind of like last resort and everything else failed. But this day and age it seems to be unless you've cursed you can't be a true witch each to their own. I do you think people don't truly understand the energetics that go into performing a curse and thinking beyond their own self or the immediate action? I it could actually be coming from my point of view, being interested in metaphysics, where I see everything as energetics and there's more than what's just out here. There are other aspects at play behind the scenes as well and if you want something to be effective as opposed to just ego gratification well then you need to stop remove the emotional intent and think things through a little bit longer but um i'm going down a rabbit hole already yay so there is a person Diana, I think it's Rachel, she's put out a book recently, recently, like in the last year, maybe two years, called Hex Twisting or something like that. I think it's in relation to, um, no, I can't even think of the word now, but it's not necessarily about just cursing. It's almost like reflecting or taking that energy and then changing it or manifesting it and then sending it back or take that energy, that hex, that, that cursing that's been directed at you and turning into something that's beneficial for you, which I think is very clever. But she, and I'm probably going to paraphrase this, has basically stated that as long as there's jealousy and people running around with a sense of self-entitlement existing in the world, that there's always going to be curses. And that is because this jealousy, this rage that we feel are actually the fundamental emotions or emotional impulses that go behind the feelings that emerge. And this is like the spitefulness. And then we get ourselves caught up into that emotional sort of spiral as opposed to stepping back and maybe looking at something that's protective, etc. And while that might be all well and good i think it is also caught up in a more than just a society need or action at the moment um her book talks about i think from memory like even if you had a run of bad luck 
don't just dismiss that there could actually be things behind the scenes um, and she talks about doing a proper sort of like diagnosis of cursing or if you feel that you've been cursed I wouldn't say I have an issue with that but the first thing that comes to mind is are we getting a bit too paranoid I know she is an American writer maybe it's just a difference in scenes and how we perceive things but the first thing that comes to my mind is are we getting too paranoid in thinking that um, cursing, that everybody has this ability to curse. Yes, and also what we are calling curses. Um, we tend to, with social media, and I know I talk about social media all the time, but if social media is a marker point, a boundary to go by society, based society upon, it's almost like, if someone looks at you funny, you think that they are cursing you and then you shoot or you're justifiable, justified to retaliate. Now, they could be looking at you funny because they've got something in their eye or they're actually looking at the person behind you or maybe they're just thinking about something. We are so caught up in this modern era of the self, of the ego, thinking that we are not only just the center of our own universes, but the center of everybody else's universe. And sometimes it's got nothing to do with us whatsoever. But we're in this mindset that everything affects us. And I suppose it does on some certain level. But we are really focusing on bringing everything to us regardless of whether it's supposed to be to us or not that in a way that sort of feeds this paranoia um and in doing that if you keep focusing on something especially from a magical lens you start creating what's called an egregore or a consciousness we talk about um, group consciousness and every time you feel paranoid that someone's cursing you or whatever, you're actually feeding this egregore, this substance of negativity or paranoia, and that can follow you or absorb you or you absorb it. And it comes around and around and around. So I guess it comes down to what is actually defined as a curse. And how effective you personally believe that the other person who allegedly is sending you this curse, that cursor or the hexer or whatever term you want to use, actually is. And where this energy is allegedly supposed to be coming from. Is it supposed to be them, an external person? Or is it part of this egregore that you are actually creating? That's something to think. In this day and age, people don't like to stop and look in the mirror. And this is what a lot of this stuff is. If you're going to be, I mean, I've talked about this before, energetics. If you're going to be surrounded and constantly think of paranoid things that people are cursing you, what are you going to attract to yourself? This is basic law of attraction, like attracts like. You are actually creating an environment for this paranoia to feed off, to come home, so to speak. And yes, I do realise and, and I'm fully aware that there are places around the world, especially in the Mediterranean, um, Middle East areas, where cursing and hexing is a really big thing. It's built into their culture. Um, and they use things like the evil eye, which is a little sort of blue bead with a little black eye on it a paint bat symbol on their boats and they keep it on charms and there's also the husma hand which is a really important form of protection from the evil eye and there are family traditions that specialize in either preventing or enacting upon the evil eye what we seem to forget about is 
the language that we are speaking, especially in the West, and this language doesn't need to be spoken externally. It could be the internal language that we are telling ourselves, the stories that we're telling ourselves. These words may actually have power. Like if you think about it, chant, spell, all consist of words. And merely just thinking about something, however, doesn't quite do it. There's got to be this belief, there's got to be this action that's actually behind them in order to motivate it, to actually direct and inst instigate the alleged hex so, or curse. So if someone says something negative to you or about you, it's up to you. Are you going to take it on board? Or are you going to dismiss it? Which do you think is more powerful? You're going to be caught up in the little mind games into the little vortex of anger, jealousy, envy, etc. And play along to their rules. Or are you going to just ignore it and walk away? And then therefore sort of take control of the situation. You can't affect or you can't stop people's animosity or negative words or what they're going to say. You can't control that. The only thing you can really control is how you react. And this is basic. I don't even know the psychology. It's common sense. I know it's sort of like doing the round of NLP and that sort of thing. All that sort of like mind stuff. Organisations, teachings, trainings, whatever they call themselves. But if someone says something negative about you, is that necessarily a curse? Magic works best, as far as I'm aware, when it's specific, when it's focused, when there is power behind it, and not just mere idle words with scattered focus. If you add your own focus and power to someone else's the words about you, then in effect, you are then shaping something that may have been irrelevant, except for your ego, yes, and giving it power and therefore attacking your own self. If you think about it, it's kind of like, oh, you're giving it force, energy. Those words, energy, where before they would not have had any energy, they would not have had any impact. Brush it off, work off a duck's back, and walk away. But we are human, and we love our ego, and our ego always gets in the way. <coughs> yeah, and there's been um, <coughs> all throughout history. There's <coughs> excuse me, um, barbarous names and the like that's been found in the old manuscripts, which has been used and contain a degree of power because it's like an egregore it's been used in a certain way over the aeons and these words themselves could have a degree of oomph behind them if they are used in the right circumstances by the right people who are aware But if there's no desire, and if there's no focus, if there's no energy, words are just words. I think we have come out of the last three years with very heavy um, global energy. We've also got had a lot of huge cosmic alignments and places that people may or may not be dealing with completely without may not even be aware of them so there's a lot of stuff happening and a lot of it is about surrender and release and if you're the type of person who hangs on to things, this is going to be your cup of tea. So it's easy to find a scapegoat as opposed to blaming ourselves. We have also gone through a period of heightened alternative viewpoints, should we say. I'll call it what it is, conspiracy theories. 
different viewpoints. Um, fear, distrust, especially in relation to leaders, political figures, etc. There's been a huge amount of failings because we're in these uncertain times and people aren't reaching the benchmarks that we have set for them. And that too can affect the energy that surrounds us. And for those of us who are more delicate, shall I say, and less, I wouldn't say less educated, but unaware as to the possibilities out there as well. All of this could impact on our interpretation. And when it comes to cursing, it is just so easy to blame somebody else. We see it happening all the time. There is a saying, I have no idea if it's um, a famous person saying or what, and again, I'll paraphrase it, about do you need a hammer to screw in a screw? In other words, is cursing the most effective way of dealing with a situation? When you think about it, to properly curse somebody, this involves a huge amount of your own personal energy, direction, and also not to mention that, that rage or that anger that you've got to build up within yourself. Unless you're one of these people who shoot at the hip. But um, I know speaking for myself personally, I've got better things to do with that time. Um, my life. Uh, I think there's enough hatred or distrust out there generally about me absorbing and focusing and building my own little ball of hate to direct at somebody. Um, I don't personally have the time to be that fixated with someone. I'd rather give them a shovel so they can help dig their own hole. I'm not interested, to be perfectly honest. I can't see the point. Unless it is in a form of protection and other means has not worked and the person is just constantly attacking, um, then I might be thinking of think, doing things differently. And I have actually been in situations where things have been done differently. But for the average Joe Blow out there, the average magical practitioner, um, nah, I've, I've got better things. I would rather just build up my own protection boundaries. Put the energy into that because that can be more beneficial for me on all levels than focusing on directing revenge on somebody. Again, I can't see the point. If you do, that's entirely up to you. But I personally can't see the point. Again, I've got better things to do with my life. So, yeah. I do have more notes on cursing, but I'm probably more looking at whether we are actually cursing ourselves. And magic takes the path of least resistance, like attracts like. Um, we manifest stuff here. Even the hermetic principles of magic, when you look at, when you understand them or even consider them, they tend to indicate that we actually are creating our own universe. And when you think of things like that from a more sort of energetical, metaphysical level, then it comes back to what I was saying earlier about taking responsibility. It's not necessarily someone else who's cursing us. It could be us that's cursing us. Or enabling us to be open enough to interpret someone else's actions or to be susceptible to someone's actions, to be drawing in somebody's actions. 
due to us being caught up in this little fixation that we have. But anything bad that happens to us, so anything that we don't like, doesn't even have to be bad, it's just something that doesn't quite agree with our plan is a curse. Sometimes it's just life. Sometimes we need to take a reality check and realize that we can't have everything, we aren't, we don't deserve everything that we wish. And yeah, get over ourselves. Mm. And on that note, I'm going to leave. Blessings.